Hello everybody and welcome back to Visit File Coast and this is an absolutely beautiful Saturday morning at very low tide, a very long way out on Cleveland's Beach. Now I very rarely <laughs> venture out this far because I'm, I'm paranoid about getting cut off and you can see how far the tide away is, tide is away. Um, and I've checked the tide table this morning so I know that that is out at the minute as far as it's going to go and I know roughly how long I've got before it's going to come in so you must always check the tide table and don't end up getting cut off anyway public service message over another quick little message before we kick off if you're new to this channel make sure that you're subscribed we cover all kinds of interesting stuff from the foul coast we do live beach walks we do Brew it too, we do local history, we do attractions, we do, you name it, we do it. So, and the more the merrier, the more people that join us, the better. So we're currently on Cleveland's Beach, quite a long, quite a long way out actually. It's, as I say, I very rarely come out this far. And it's beautiful, it's really lovely, it's really quiet and there's just this lot chattering to one another and yapping and making the seagull noises and doing what seagulls do. So it's difficult to imagine that all this beach is going to be underneath a whole amount of water by the time it gets up there. So imagine a, imagine a winter's day when it's coming over the top and it's lashing like, like you won't believe. I mean, this is the view cinema here on Cleveland seafront and you can see you can just see the steps in front of it of the sea defences and when you think that the water comes right to the top of those steps that's some quantity of water and obviously now we're all a lot more aware as well about rising sea levels and climate change and what might be driving it and what, what it might have been like in the past and all the rest of it <clears throat> and some years ago we were presented with a uh, I'm saying some years ago, it's two or three, we were presented with a chance to do some proper research. Because if you're a fan of this area, you might also know as well that there's a, there's a theory that we've got sunken, sunken villages and petrified forests off these, off these shores. In fact, thinking about that, and you know, I, I looked at that piece of wood and wondered if it was a peg I wonder if that's I wonder if that's relevant should I have picked it up it looks too big and too big and heavy for me to carry so we're going to start sort of working back towards shore now um, and talk about rising sea levels and whether or not it is fact or whether it's fiction so Imogen Lyons was at the time doing a Masters in Environment and Development as an undergraduate. She'd done her undergraduate in, in archaeology. So she's a Lancaster University student and she spent the summer of 2019 researching all these tales about petrified forests and um, tsunamis and lost villages and one thing and another. And you probably know that there is a story about a a sunken village pretty much pretty much somewhere here from way back in the day all these all these things are in are on our visit cleveland's website there's there's all the kind of information and evidence that we've managed to collect over the years so you can have a look at that um online and see see what you think anyway imogen looked at geological reports and historical reports and literature and archaeological remains and she did all kinds of things and in fact her thesis is also on Visit Cleveland's as well and it's really worth reading it's not written in a technical um, advanced sort of over your head way it's written in a really easy to understand way and it's really interesting I I've been sort of looking into this kind of thing for a long time and, and I learnt quite a lot when I read it. So it's worth, it's worthwhile. 
So Imogen came to the conclusion that there were three probable events that might have led to the rising of the sea level and the creation of the petrified forest and this sunken village offshore here. And they were potentially a tsunami, a storm or a bog burst. Now I'd never heard of a bog burst, I'd got absolutely no idea what that was. And apparently it's when the land gets so, in fact I'm just going to wash I'm just going to wash the mud off my wellingtons while I'm in this stream. Just excuse me a second while I have a paddle. It's when the land gets so, so soaked in water that it can't hold anything any longer. And then it kind of erupts like a, like a spot, I suppose. Um, so I was, I was quite intrigued by that. I thought, oh, that's a new one. That's a new one on me. Anyway... There's this story about Singleton Thorpe, which is believed to be some miles offshore. And it's first mentioned in the 1800s when timber longhouses were, were common. Um, so whether or not that is true or whether that is, you know what they say, don't you? The truth is often, str often stranger than fiction. Whether that's true or whether that's sort of local folklore is anybody's guess. Um, but we're walking now in the direction of the end of sort of Victoria Road West, at which point I need to stop and I need to show you something that I've got in my pocket because I've got a photograph of what is believed to be part of the petrified forest. Now, I suppose if I'd got full waders on and I were a bit more brave and willing, I might be able to see that today when it's such a low tide. But this is a piece of wood that's in the beach, which you can see is clearly a, a tree stump. It's the, you can see the roots down here near my thumb. And the, the top of it is where the, the trunk would have been. And this was taken on Cleveland's Beach, round about the end of Victoria Road West. So there are still some remains of that and they've actually been carbon dated. So we do know, we do know that where we're standing now was once land. Which is quite a chilling thought really, isn't it? When you think how much, how much water comes in when the tide comes in. And apparently, around about 7,000 BC, you could have walked to the Isle of Man. And the sea level rose rapidly from then to 6,680 BC. Now, the Isle of Man is over there. At night, when it's sunset, you can just about see it through the, through the wind turbines. And this area goes back to, there's evidence going back to the Iron Age and Roman occupation and medieval times and all kinds of stuff. It's really interesting. Anyway, I realised some of that became out a little bit disjointed because I'm also watching what's happening on the, on the seafront as well. Um, <clears throat> so the conclusion that Imogen came to was that sea levels were much lower between 6680 BC and the second century and the, they are the, the, the remains of medieval archaeology um, when the area was sparsely populated and people lived off the land you know you, you, you caught or picked what you ate and if you didn't catch it or pick it you didn't eat it didn't you and in, in Imogen's opinion, the most likely reason for this sea level rise was a storm surge. Because there are no tsunami deposits in the geological reports. And Wadham, Thorpe and Kilgrimall villages weren't sunk at the same time. It's all thought for thought, isn't it? You know, we've got all these... We've got all these lovely sea defences that protect us and keep us dry. There's another video as well that I made 
recently about ramps in Cleveland, which are the really old fashioned original sea defences. And they are a long way inland, they're near the tramway. So if you think about travelling from the seafront to the, to the tram tracks from here, that's where the, the sort of 1800 sea defences are, which is, which is quite a thought. So maybe when people talk about um, climate change and cutting your carbon emissions, maybe they've got a point. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little wander around a very empty, very flat, very low tide beach. And I hope you've enjoyed the, the story of the rising sea levels. As I said, I'll put all the links to the articles in the description underneath the video. If you're looking on a phone, there's a little tiny pointy arrow underneath um, the actual video that you're watching. If you just click on that, it will expand the description and you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see um, the details. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Visit File Coast and make sure that you've hit that little bell for notifications and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.